Ranger Nation, so today we're here to talk about Rear Soldier Episode 4, which is Dragon and Tiger, the max speed battle. Kind of reminded me of something of uh, Goonja right there, I was just like, I generally had that, they're speeding through whatever they do. So today we're going to be doing the same thing where I'm going to talk about it and hopefully it doesn't turn into a review review which i think it might do but hey let's talk about it before we begin this video if you want to hit that like button hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be notified when more videos drop you know it generally helps the channel out and you'll see more of these types of videos so without further ado let's begin this review this entire episode was actually quite funny it wasn't a episode where it was quite dark that we've had previously with the other ones but it actually felt more light-heartened so we were introduced to uh, the uh, green and black ranger which is bamba the black ranger and toa the uh, green ranger and to be fair like what, at the very beginning you have them like talking about the other rangers and then all of a sudden bamba's like whoa what's that over there and pulls the red ranger out of nowhere um, that kind of made me laugh. When they're kind of talking, uh, Toa is, is a cheeky brat. I'm just going to say, you're a cheeky brat. Because he doesn't really care. But then when uh, Kuro turns around and says, Actually, I know where your, like, your dino knights are. So, you know, we can team up. You know, I'll help you. Uh, Toa tries to snatch it from him. And I generally, if, if he got it from me, this is me. I would literally punch him and go, I'm trying to help you stop being a dick and actually let me help you. We have the same goal, so stop being, oh, me and my brother can, like, we, we don't need anyone because you do need me because I have the map, I need your skills, let's get on this. So it then turns into this whole kind of, like, matching between them. So there's a scene at the very beginning where they're both getting ready to charge and they rush at each other and they do this whole, like, swipe thing. And I generally thought it was going to be the first one that falls down, but they cut these leaves. And I really like Toa's because it turns, it's two men giving each other's business cards. I thought that was perfect. Uh, where Kuro's is just basically a rabbit, which doesn't look like it. It reminded me of Finn from Adventure Time. We'll kind of introduce the Minotaur in this one, or Minasar, and... You know, you don't know where it comes from at the very beginning. So it's kind of just like rocking around, shooting people with this like kind of water blast, which then puts people into a deep sleep. We have Asuna and Melt, they arrive on the scene. And then we jump back to Hoya and Kyo, um, basically doing like rock, paper, scissors. And Bamba is just in the background going like, oh God, when's this going to stop? Koa gets the message and says, hey, you know, you are come here, you know, we need you to defeat the Minasar, uh, which then turns into another kind of challenge between them. And it's really nice to kind of see this challenging thing because it's not just a general like, oh, you know, I've beaten you, you've got to join me. It felt like through the entire whole episode until I think near the end where Toy is like, look, you know, I've got to join up with you. But up to that part, it's all like, I, I've got to be better than you. And the others just don't care. They're like, oh, we don't care about this. But Toy is like, no, I've got to try and defeat him. So I forgot to write down the name of the slime monster. Um, but the one that's able to create kind of the energy from others to create Minasars. Um, he's there, he's like summoned his minions. And even though you get like a really cool intro with uh, Toya and Bamba, when they just jump in, like, you see how we've seen with the Red Ranger as well as like pink and blue. Um, I actually generally like this because I can't wait for them all to team up. So we're gonna get like a full on like massive like call out attack as well as the kind of like shing shing where you see their faces and stuff like that. So I generally kind of looking forward to that. So as Toya and Kuro are kind of fighting, they use certain souls like extended soul and power soul. And they're just trying to defeat the minions, like knocking them back. And um, one of them's kind of looking through this kind of like small hidey hole and Kuro just either stabs him or punches him or kicks him. And I just, I, I just burst out laughing because it's something that I generally didn't see. So when the slime guy, um, figures this kind of thing out he calls all the minions back and puts them on like the kind of um like this track so it's like hey i'm gonna try and take you down um, but in the end doesn't um they kind of get caught back so seeing this sort of as i said this whole kind of dynamic change um i wouldn't expect at the very beginning and again like it felt like uh, Toya and Bamba were kind of like 6th uh, and 7th rangers then obviously being the 4th and 5th. So it's nice to kind of see this. 
So as the kind of thing goes on, you know, their challenges of Kiryu and Toya, they're kind of going on. And all of a sudden, as they find this monster, and he like kind of goes on his knees and he's like, here, here, which again is linked to what happens later on in the episode. Um, Tangjo just comes out of nowhere. And notice he does come out of nowhere randomly. So he's like, boom, here I am. Um, and he takes down Kuro and Toya really kind of quickly. But this is Bamba. He just, he's a Bamf. He just, he jumps straight in. You know, he's going for it and he doesn't care. And he haunts his own, which is really interesting. But it does get to the point where Tancho is extremely powerful in this one. And if uh, Bamba didn't use the solid soul, then he, I think, would have been either knocked out or badly hurt. So using that kind of quick thinking, um, I generally really like because it wasn't, I've noticed it, like when it comes to the souls, some of them take ages, some of them are really quickly. So like, say for example, when they use extend at the very beginning, it's like extend and then they can use it. But soul, you have to go like soul, 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 and then they, they get the power. So using the solid soul really quickly, boom, you know, it saved his life or saved him from being hurt really badly. Everyone's like, hey, come on, we gotta figure out where we're going, what's happening, you know, where is this, the energy coming from to do that? And they all head to the hospital. Hospital's a big thing in this series. It's like, boom, let's go to the hospital, guys. That's where all the monsters are being. Um, so we see his son and his father, and his father is, I think, asleep, or is like saying, like, you know, you know you've gotta be better, or, or something like that. So they kind of figure out that's where the energy is coming from. Now, one thing I did like about this is in the next scene, Kiro slams the door and says, look, you know, I'm going to help you find your stuff. I'm going to help you find your Dino Knights. This is the main thing that we need to do. Um, and, you know, you kind of think the others would be like, oh, cheers for that. But it feels very like they're kind of hostile towards each other. So it's something completely different on that one. We kind of like get a commercial break and then obviously the they've all kind of paired off. So you've got Suna and Bamba and the way that they're kind of talking, it feels like they're on a date or she's trying to get information from him and he is not saying anything and it infuriates her. I think they obviously find out where um, the Dino Knight for Bamba is, uh, but then we switch to another scene where we have like Melt, Toya and Cure all kind of looking around. And I generally kind of like this because they try techniques. So Toyo uses floating thing and it doesn't really work that well. And then they call, then they call the, the T-Rex. Taramigo in and that's what made me laugh because it's the way it's trying to attack. It's like trying to knock down this mountain that can't be defeated for some strange reason. Um, I generally thought it could be with that much force. And it's just when Taramigo's like, at the end, like he's failed. I, I thought that was kind of funny because I don't expect that from a Zord or anything like that. I know they're not Zords, but I'm gonna call them Zords, but I, I, I wouldn't expect it from this. Um, so it's kind of nice to see that. Now we have the Minasaur back and he is in giant mode and he is taking down a lot of people really quickly just by shooting them down. Now one thing I didn't kind of understand is it turns its attention to a plane that's flying overhead. So you kind of think that if it was firing, even if it hit the plane, it wouldn't do anything because there's nothing in there. Obviously you got the people, but it just hits the outer shell of the, of the craft. But you know, so when the rangers are on the scene, they, they try and make sure that the plane doesn't go into a crash because there's nothing they can do. So we, this is where we see Terramigo get called in as well as the other Dino Knights. Um, and then the rangers form the Megazord and they start battling. Now I really like the Megazord fights, the Megazord fights are perfect. I generally really like them because it feels something fresh and new. Now one thing I really liked in this is the music and ambience that's used. Uh, when Bambra figures out that the dad is kind of the one that's to cause this and he goes off to do it, like kind of defeat him or kill him or whatever, when literally it's that moment where everything kind of goes silent and then Toya's like, no, stop, you know, this isn't what we're doing, you know, we've got to team up. You know, I generally kind of thought, oh, they bring this whole thing where Terramigo in the T-Rex, when they're in the Dino Knight Rex three knights mode, this is when they start figuring out that they've got to play a game with the kid because this is when the dad's like, here, here, and then obviously there's, there's stuff around to play. Um, they do this sort of thing where they play like um, rock, paper, scissors, uh, tag and stuff like that. And they use the monster to actually destroy the, uh, like the, the rock formation, which again, you kind of think that they could have used the Megazord and or the Dino Knight and just like plowed through it. So this releases the Sabertooth Tiger, which then joins onto the Megazord later on because it's super fast, you know, in its normal state without joining up with the others, uh, it's able to take down or hurt the Minasaur really quickly. When it combines with the Dino Knight, um, it's able to you go really quicker uh, and use it like kind of a slash attack. And this is kind of nice. 
At the very end, um, Bamba leaves the dad and says, like, you know, uh, spend time with your son. Your family is everything. You know, nothing is more important than family. And then, obviously, he finds his Dino Knight. And this is when Toya comes back in and it's just like, yeah, I kind of like them. You know, I didn't kind of expect this. And then it kind of switches to the end when Bamba's like, oh, you actually generally like these guys. And Toya's like, oh, actually, yeah, kind of. Um, and then you see Kuro, Melt, Asuna, New Eye, and then the father. And they're all trying to eat dinner, but then they've noticed that they've put all like the, the curry pot onto the paperwork that's taken them ages, that they're taking the father ages. And it's like, oh no, what are we gonna do? And then it kind of cuts. Now I generally really am liking the series. I'm liking the fact that they've got different souls, uh, that they've got different powers, that it's something completely different and not towards like the Sentai that we normally see, where you have like the full team straight away, when the other rangers join up, you know, that sort of stuff. I generally am liking all of this. It makes for interesting entertainment. Um, I'm not getting that bored with it. Um, you know, I like the darker elements that they put in the first few episodes, but this one felt kind of really light-hearted. It generally didn't feel like they were trying to push anything, and it just felt like a good episode. I really liked Toya and Kyo's like kind of rivalry, and I kind of really want to see that all the way through, not just for one episode. You know, I'd really like it if it's like, oh, I've got to try and become faster than you, and it kind of builds up. Uh, that, that would be, kind of, to me, that would be kind of perfect. But for what we've got, um, I think even like with the editing and the camera wise, like again, they put some color onto the ranges, um, which obviously makes it stand out a little bit. And the editing and the camera angles are perfect. I absolutely adore it. So I'm watching it to see and getting some ideas on how this is gonna be and how I, I could use it in my sort of stuff. But for what we've got so far, it's a good series. It's a good Sentai. I'm excited for all the products. That's gonna be fun. There will be reviews on this when they all pop out. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. So Ranger Nation, what are your thoughts on the Sentai? Are you enjoying it? Are you not? Do you want more? Or would you like them to go down a different route? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you like this video, like, favorite, comment, and consider subscribing. Check out all the other videos. Hit the like button on the notification bell. And as always, Ranger Nation, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in a bit.